difference between decay rate and decay factor decay rate and decay factor let the population of a town follows the model pt equals 1000 times say 0.93 raised to t now as we calculate the growth rate or growth factor similarly the decay rate and decay factor whatever is the base for this exponent t is the factor now here this is value this value is less than 1 so this population model represents the decay or the decrease in the population so we can say that whenever the base sorry whenever the base of the exponent t whenever the base of the exponent t whenever this value is less than 1 it represents it represents decay or decrease in the population it represents the decrease in population or the decay of any substance the carbon dating can be also done using the following procedure whenever the value of the base of this exponent t is less than 1 it represents the decay now this term inside the bracket is called decay factor this 0.93 is called decay factor this is your decay factor now you need to calculate the decay rate to calculate the decay rate we compare it with the standard formula of the decrease in population the standard formula for the decrease in population is given by decrease or decrease in population the decrease in population is given by the formula pt equals p times or p naught times 1 minus r over 100 raised to t 1 plus r over 100 for the increase in population 1 minus r over 100 for the decrease in population so this pt becomes 1000 times 0 0.93 0 0.93 raised to t can also be expressed as 1000 times 0.93 is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.07 raised to t again the decimal value so 1 minus 0 0.07 decimal places is 1 2 2 decimal places are there so 0 07 over 100 raised to t this can also be represented as 1000 times 1 minus 7 over 100 raised to t and this 7 this r is 7 here and the 7 is nothing but the 7 percent and this is the decay rate so your decay rate is 7 percent decay factor is the term which is the base for this exponent t whole value whole value is called the decay factor but the decay rate is calculated by subtracting or in other words you can say just subtract this value from the one you will get the decay rate or I can say 1 minus 0 0.93 is 0 0.07 and 0 0.07 is nothing but 0 0.07 sorry 0 0.07 is nothing but this is equal to 7 over 100 which represents 7 percent and this is how we calculate the decay rate compound interest we calculate the compound interest using the formula a equals p times 1 plus r over 100 raised to t where a stands for amount p stands for principal r is the rate of interest T is the time in years. Suppose you are depositing a amount, so a principal of say thousand dollars 
in a bank at the rate of say three percent per year for a period of time is say three years then the amount you which you will get at the end of three years is calculated using this formula and the compound interest is calculated out of it is by the formula amount minus principal whatever is the principal whatever is the principal like here for this question thousand dollars is your principal two thousand dollars bonus will be added or whatever is added it is the compound interest and amount is the money which you will get at the end of the year so this compound interest or the simple interest is nothing but it acts, acts like a bonus to the sum of money which you are depositing with the bank or investing somewhere and we calculate it the calculate the amount using this formula suppose you are depositing this much money at given rate and time so the amount at the end of the three years is calculated using the formula thousand times I'm just substituting the values of P R and T in the given formula a equals thousand times 1 plus R is a 3 percent over 100 raised to the time of 3 years so this is thousand times now because the denominator is 100 we cannot add both of them unless we make the denominator of the first term also 100 so I'll multiply and divide the values with 100 so you have 100 plus 3 over 100 raised to 3 so you have 1000 times 103 over 100 raised to 3 now this is the value of the amount which you will get at the end of the 3 years now if we do the calculation for the compound interest step by step it will be more clear to you like with the same principle and same time period and the same rate of interest we will calculate the amount at the end of three successive years so amount at the end of first year is given by the formula a equals p times 1 plus r over 100 raised to t thousand times 1 plus r is 3 over 100 raised to t is here this t is one year so thousand times one times hundred one times hundred plus three over hundred raised to one so thousand times hundred plus three over hundred raised to one so thousand times hundred three over hundred so you started you invested thousand dollars at the end of this is dollars at the end of first year you will get thousand times hundred three over hundred and if you want to calculate this value this will get cancelled with this one zero three zero is the value which you will get at the end of the first year now if you want to calculate the amount at the end of the second year we can do it using the same formula the number of years is 2 so the amount at the end of 2 years amount at end of say 2 years again using the same formula P times 1 plus R over 100 time is 2 years so 1000 times 1 plus 1 plus 3 over 100 just now we have seen that that value is 103 over 100 raised to 2 now this value can also be written as 103 over 100 again 103 over 100 now what is the difference between them initially at the end of first year this is your amount at the end of the second year to this value again you are multiplying 103 by 100 so by our induction method for the end of the three years it should be 103 thousand times 103 by 100 103 by 100 times 103 by 100 let's see if it works out so the amount at end of say three years 
again it is given by the formula 1000 times 1 plus 3 over 100 raised to 3 as we have already seen this value is 103 over 100 raised to 3 so it is nothing but 1000 times 103 over 100 square this was the amount at the end of the second year times 103 over 100 so we can say that whatever is the value at the end of the first year or the amount at the end of first year or each year becomes principal or acts as a principal for the second or coming year. So the principal keeps on changing in the case of compound interest and always you can calculate the compound interest by subtracting principal from the amount which you have obtained and because the formula is given by P times 1 plus R over 100 raised to T and the position of T, this position of T is exponential so it makes this amount, this amount an exponent function so this is an exponential function because of the position of this t and the graph for the compound interest is given by the formula or it is shown on the graph by this